Yeah, thank you, Montreal. I'm... <laughs> Women and men were so different. Women like musicals, don't they? Do you like them? I hate them, man. That Les Miserable crap. <laughs> First of all, they stole my word. And second of all, man, it's stupid. It's completely unbelievable. The guy's walking down the street and then he suddenly sings and everyone's fine with it. <laughs> if we did that, we'd be in a mental institution in 15 seconds. It's ridiculous. And my songs would be a little different than the ones in that stupid movie. I'd be like, stand in here at the deli counter. The guy who works here needs a hairnet for his arms. <laughs> Men and women, but we go because we're guys. We go because we're pretending that we have culture. We have no culture, ladies. We just want to see you naked. I'm sorry. Because you're way hotter than us naked. The happiest moment of a man's life is when the woman is naked and she's crawling into bed. Look over at your shoulder, ladies, at the guy, man. He's all cool like he fully expected it. <laughs> you know what he's thinking in his head? Ah! <laughs> We're animals. That's why we like doing it from behind so you can't see the look on our face. Ah! It's your own fault, it's your underwear. It's way better than ours. <laughs> it is, isn't it, man? You dream about her in her underwear. She never has that dream about you. <laughs> if she does, she calls it a nightmare. <laughs> What's our underwear like? It's useless, it's not flattering. Comes with a fly for no apparent reason. No man uses the fly in his underwear, ladies. No one would waste time pulling it through the hole like that. What the hell is picking at it? That's ridiculous. We pull it down and flop it over the top. That's what we do. And if you're standing at a urinal and the guy next to you is using the fly, you punch him in the face. We're trying, ladies. You're way more beautiful than we are, but we're trying, huh? I groom myself, I try. It's just hard, because we're so gross as guys, aren't we? We got hair growing out our nose. Women hate that. They'll always point it out. What the hell is that? What are you, growing a Hitler mustache from the inside out? Never pluck one of those things. Oh, do not do that. That thing is really in that hair governs your whole body. Don't pluck it out. Your eyes water for 20 minutes. You sneeze 17 times in a row and you get an infection. That's why they made a product, the nose hair trimmer. Some asshole invented this. You plug it in the wall, it's electric on top of it all. Then you shove it in your nose and the guy on the pack's all happy like he's doing a good thing. <laughs> your face is a little different. Here's how it works. It's got sharp metal blades and they spin and it goes <laughs> And it doesn't cut the nose hairs, it sharpens them like a pencil sharpener. Can you do this in your nose, please? Maybe I'm nuts, I'm getting older. When you get older, you go crazy, kid. You ever talk to yourself out loud? Oh, you don't, it's coming, trust me. I'm so crazy, I tell myself what to do out loud. All right, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> so I'm in a hotel, I'm getting off the elevator and I'm walking the wrong way down the hall and I know I'm walking the wrong way because I can see the numbers on the doors going in the wrong direction. So I say out loud, turn around, you fucking asshole. You're going the wrong way. And I turn around and there's two people standing there just staring at me. 
And they walk into their room, you know. And I know the guy thought I was retarded because when I walked back the other way, I heard him say through the door to his wife, I think that guy's retarded. <laughs> so now I'm furious. I knock on the door, you know, and he opens it and I go, do not call me retarded. You're supposed to call me mentally challenged now. <laughs> so get a girl that loves you and, and, and buy a dog. Yeah, yeah, never get a cat. Well, you never buy a cat, do you? They just show up on your front seat. You hear this. You're like, shit, maybe I better let it in. Thus begins a 25-year commitment <laughs> to the most standoffish bullshit animal on the face of the planet. <laughs> Walk around like they pay the mortgage. <laughs> Get a dog, man. Dogs are fantastic. My dog, I've kept him alive. He's 17 years old. Here he is right here. See, look. And for you people at the back, get better seats next time. But he's 17, man, he's really old, you can barely tell, man. He, he breathes at night so quietly, you barely see his stomach rise and fall. You don't know if he's dead or alive. I wake up in the morning and I poke him. And when he opens his eyes, I say, well, I guess we're going for a walk today but I don't want him to die because I've had adventures with him. I almost got mugged walking that dog, but I'm so smart I thought my way out of it. All right, I'll tell you this story. <laughs> so I'm walking a dog, right? And this guy comes running out of the bushes and he goes, give me your wallet. And I think fast and I go, I don't bring my wallet when I take the dog for a walk. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, all right. And he walked away. And I had my wallet in my pocket the whole time. I lied to a criminal and I feel a sense of achievement. I love you, Montreal. Thank you.